Good afternoon everybody and welcome to Don't You Know I've Had a Stroke, the first one of 2021. So today we're doing a bit of a, a recap on the life of somebody I interviewed a while ago called Georgie. Hopefully you managed to tune into. But basically, Georgie works for the RAF and has multiple sclerosis. And she's one of my heroes because she came to talk at my stroke group and really inspired me to get off my backside and go and do something, which I did. And I managed to walk in water not on water, because that's only for Jesus. But I did walk in the water. So we're going to have a recap now on Georgie. So we'll bring her in. And remember, we are live on Facebook and YouTube. Um, and please comment and let us know where you're from and who you are. Thank you. Georgie, hello. Hi there. I can't hear you very well. It's... um. It's it's a funny. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. It's it's. You can't hear me at all. I can, I can, I can hear just a, like a noise. There's no, I can't hear any words. Oh, I can hear you perfectly. I'll just Let me switch my and... Wi-Fi off. Hold on. I've got 4G. Let's see if that's any better. Any better? No, it's 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 like um a roboty. voice so melissa can hear both of you so uh, can you just carry on with your story please okay all right um so i think i spoke to you um back in the summer at some point and um about my MS and the Warrior Games and, and what a great year 2019 had been for me. And that was on a clinical trial, but the trial was sort of failing and making me quite poorly. Um, so not long after that, my mental health took quite a tumble. Um, I'd separated from um, my husband I was alone quite a lot in Bristol in my apartment with, that I that I work from, um, and it was just not a very nice time for me. I reached out for help, probably around May June time, um, but uh, it 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 didn't get taken too seriously. It was you know everyone's suffering, everyone's in the same sort of boat. You know, if you feel you need to talk further, then try these people. So I sort of felt that maybe what what I was saying wasn't that severe and that, you know, there was lots and lots of people going through the same thing. So I sort of battled on with it, which was the worst thing I could have done. I should have, I should have taken it further again. Um, but that led to sort of the end of September so a few months later, I actually um, got to a point where um, I took an overdose uh, of tramadol. And, you know, it wasn't planned. It wasn't something I'd been really thinking about. Clearly not, because I didn't research tramadol and tramadol, <laughs> tramadol doesn't kill you. It just makes you very, very poorly for a little while after. Um, so 
was it a cry for help? Probably. I'd reached out for help and it, no, nothing had really happened. So that was that was my way out. Um, obviously, I have two children, so I didn't even, my head was in that poor place that um, I didn't even consider the after effects. Hence why I say that it was very reactive. Um, so since that, um, obviously, my employment um, in the Air Force, they uh, take these things quite seriously. And I got immediate support, immediate help. Um, so I went through our Department of Community Mental Health team who got me um, straight away on board with them and, and chatting and uh, whilst waiting I, I think within two weeks they had me with a um specialist therapist um and that all that also that therapist has actually helped me through my sort of the early stages of my divorce as well so it's acted as a bit of mediation um to try and get my head in the place that it needs to be for going through a divorce because as much as um, my ex-husband and I get along okay, divorces can do funny things to people. So I need to be prepared for, um, uh, you know, things that might happen along that road. Um, so where I'm at now, I actually today had my last session with the military mental health team. They've actually discharged me today. Um, they're happy with my progress. I still have the um, relationship therapist that they have put me through, which is external to the military. Um, and I'm sort of halfway through that therapy at the moment. And that's that's going well. Um, I still have a little wobble, but I think everyone does. And with the start of another lockdown, that's, it's not ideal, really. I'm very aware that... Um, to fix myself I had to face the issues that I was having so my separation being alone quite a lot um I also did get involved in another relationship which was too soon um and it wasn't it, it wasn't the right time to be getting involved with someone else um so all these things were sort of, you know, my, my treatment on lack of, because it wasn't on anything. So there was quite a lot bubbling to the point where I, you know, I boiled over. So where I'm at now is I would never, ever do anything like that again. My clarity is much better. My thought process, I think a lot now before... Um, I say or do things. I've um, backed away from social media. Social media really doesn't help sometimes. It's great at connecting people in the good times but when the bad times are there. Um, social media can sometimes play a, bit, play a bit of a part too. So I've backed away from that a little bit. Um, I'm working from home again at the moment, which I really don't like doing, to be honest. I'm a, I'm a quite a social creature, so I like to um, I like to interact with real humans rather than computers. Um, and yeah, my head is my head is in a very different place. It's in a much stronger place. I know I still get get emotive talking about it because you know it was only September. It wasn't that long ago um thank you uh but we learn from our mistakes and i'm certainly learning that no matter how strong you think people are on the outside there's there's a whole depth of hidden sadness sometimes and i remember someone saying to me you know those that smile the most are the ones you need to watch out for so and i am quite as I said, a social person, I'm, I, I like being around people. So, um, yeah, it's good. Uh, where am I now? 
with life, I suppose. Uh, yeah, as I said, I'm working from home. My husband and I are getting divorced. Uh, I have regular contact with my children. Um, my disability work within the MOD is fantastic. Um, it's really, it's really helped actually. It's, it's almost formed a part of my therapy for me. Um, thank you, Melissa. Um, but we do have to just dig deep sometimes and find that little bit of strength that's left inside and um, fight forwards. I've certainly taken some lessons from this uh, to the point that when um, when when they were talking about lockdowns again and work, and I, I remember I, I spoke to uh, I spoke to the whole team at work, and I said if anyone actually wants to come into work and take that risk, then that's up to them. I'm not going to tell anyone to stay at home and work because sometimes that's not good for our mental health. So if you choose to and you you take the appropriate risk at work and you you take the appropriate action to stay as safe as possible then so be it um i have to actually think about my health which is why um i'm going to be working from home for for a while until this new wave sort of passes over but that that is my choice but i wouldn't put that choice on any you know I, I make sure people decide that for themselves because i do have certain members of my team who have said i'm coming in I'm, I'm not staying at home i want to separate work and i want to separate my home life um and that's absolutely fine so lessons to be learned from a leadership perspective as well from my work you know I, i've learned that i really need to we all need to engage with our people uh, we all need to make sure that we know exactly what what we're never going to know 100% what happens with people's private lives and your colleagues and your peers and your you know leaders but we should all really look out for each other especially during this this third lockdown um because we we are all human we've all got a capacity that can be reached so let's not reach it let's let's stay at a nice 50 percent which is a healthy capacity to have um and help each other i'm happy if anyone's got any questions and they want to ask about anything i just have a If you have any questions out there, please uh, ask them and I will ask Georgie. I can hear you now, Mike. It's all right. Can you? Yeah. Technology, eh? I know. Might be the weather. <laughs> Blame you, can't blame, you can't blame the weather in Bristol. We can in <laughs> Wales, but not in England. <laughs> I don't know. It's been it's been really misty for the last two days. Quite foggy here. It's been hard sort of visibility. Um. Yeah. So that that's really my the, the latest on me. I suppose the story continues. I've decided. I've got um two comrades that I do my disability work with, and we have decided to try and forge forward a bit of a speaking business because we we all have a bit of a story um obviously my ms my sport and um now mental health i suppose add on it's a bit of a tick isn't it so um we've decided that we do so much speaking within the mod that we're going to try and take it outside the mod and 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 spread it to That's other really organizations great. so especially within organizations that have leaders senior leaders that maybe need to be a bit more understanding of their their teams and their private lives and the pressures that they have when they leave the office or the workplace to go home but you say the forces have been really good to you yeah from this incident they they really swept me up quite quickly again you know i worried at one point um 
could I lose my job over this because it's a it's quite a serious mental health issue but um uh, so far I've not heard anything towards that that you know they've tried to help me they did try to medicate me at one point but um I you know it didn't it didn't work out and I didn't take them so um I I think for me the therapy side and talking has a better effect than taking any pills um that's that's my we choice have we have a question from melissa what has been some of the things that mental health gave you a, as a tool to help um so my therapist a lady called bernadette she doesn't actually do a lot of the talking when we're together it uh, like it's over facetime it's very much I spill out what has happened in my my 10 days or however long. And then she just prompts little questions to see or challenges each week. Little things that I've adjusted to help me um, have been, I, um, I downloaded the Headspace app, which helps me go to sleep. So there's some meditation on there. Um, I've on my I have an iPhone, so on my iPhone, I've switched on my health app to do not disturb after a certain time at night. So I'm not sat on my phone scrolling through Facebook or something. Um, and just little little adjustments like that. Um, if I'm in a, a group message, I'm muting things because I don't, you know, if, if it's just jokes constantly all night and I'm like, I can catch up with that tomorrow. So I'm trying to put myself in a better place in the evenings, which is where I usually struggle to sleep and, and relax and be calm. Um, and that those little things have helped. When you have a good sleep, you wake up and you feel better and you feel like you face the day is probably the point I'm trying to make. And I had got into a circle where I couldn't rest easy because I couldn't switch off. So for me, if I fix the sleep and the calmness at night that helps the next day yeah i mean i'm have, i have a lot of problems sleeping and um, i've tried meditation um it works a little um i'll give you one there's one called the celestine meditation and it's amazing mm. yeah I mean, and this is the thing, I think it's being open to trying things that you wouldn't normally try. Uh, a friend of mine reached out to me. Um, he's a, He owns a yoga business in Bath. Um, he's ex-military and he gave me a year's subscription free to his online yoga um, and just said, just, just get on this, clear your mind, have a little yoga time or a little stretch. Um, and, it, you know, people have been very kind was do should i should i have used social media as a platform to make people aware of where i was at i did question before i posted but i did clearly go through what i was posting yeah a few times before i posted it um but actually like with my ms if people don't know what people go through how how do you help it's like my MS, people always just looked at me and thought, oh, God, she's strong. She's always doing all this sport. You wouldn't know she's got MS, but they don't see the struggles, the physical struggles that go on behind closed doors. And the same with mental health. If people, people that know me were so shocked when that post went up and the amount of private messages and support that I had was overwhelming. Um, it's gonna make me cry again. It, it was so kind. Um, and so from that moment on, I also knew that I could never ever go back to that place again in my head, because actually there is support. You just need to ask for it. And I know for me, it's pride, I suppose, because, because um, and again, social media on a positive and then social media on a negative my social media because i try and be honest on it i try and say when i'm good and i'm bad um i try and um highlight the things that you can do um as a, with ms rather than just 
maybe not trying. So I'm trying to be a positive sort of role model, I suppose, physically for the, for the illness that I have. And I thought, well, I need to do the same with this. Mental health touches so many people. Yeah. Probably most households around the country have got, have had mental health touch their, their household in some way. And so it's, it's a huge issue and one that I know is taken very seriously, but only if people are aware of it. Uh, Melissa says, and yeah, yeah, it, it is difficult, and I do question sometimes whether I need to do that. But if I don't, the next person will think the same. Potentially, there's very few that will stand up and, and talk about it. I think that's why our stroke community all over the world is so important. And um, Jerry from Texas always says a stroke is not for the weak. And um, Laura Messner, who works with Paul Cummins, um, she was singing this morning on her chat show, um, Let It Be. And I just thought, you know, it's so powerful because when I was in hospital, uh, you're going to get me going now. I thought about suicide because I felt I was going to be a burden. Mm. Yeah. But I'm so glad I didn't now because I feel I've got um, a journey to help people now. Sounds a bit sloppy, but it's true. So, you know, that's why I do this. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what the 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 chap that I had had, had the relationship with um, post sort of separation, he has a quite a severely disabled daughter, and um, she's she's lovely. And when I look at the struggles that she's had from such an early age, I did feel selfish, and I did feel oh gosh, you know, there's people a lot worse off than me, but everyone's capacity is so different and this is the problem is you know i do appear strong on the outside and i appear this tough cookie but actually i'm a i'm a little i'm like a ferrero rocher i'm crunchy on the outside and a little soft interior on the inside i'm still scared of you georgie <laughs> so you should be no, no, <laughs> um but yeah, it's it is it's a tricky one. But um, I I've I did I've done two dial-ins just before Christmas within MOD, um, and it's something that we do quite regularly, talking and educating senior leaders and stuff. And um, I, I've started to bring the mental health side in. It's still quite raw to talk about, hmm. um, but it's actually had a huge effect, um, and people are really listening because what i'm trying to say in my employment is covid sort of enforcing people to work from home isn't necessarily the right thing to do let's find other ways of working where it's still safe in a covid environment but they're not enforced so my colleagues are on a unit for instance they're all sort of like locked in so they've still got a big social bubble because I can't go anywhere. So they're all there together. My job, I'm in a city and I'm in an apartment, so it's very different. If I was on a unit, I maybe would have approached the issues I had differently because I'd have had face-to-face -face contact with people more. So I know that's how, you know, you shouldn't stay at home if you're in an abusive relationship. But what people forget, it could be yourself that's abusing yourself. Does that yeah. make any sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And because I, I do come across as quite stoic um, and strong, you know, people do then just assume that you're, you'll be able to deal with whatever's thrown at you and actually not the case, always. Well, we're all here for you and we will catch up again in a couple of months with hopefully a 
a nice story again. So I want to thank you so much, George, Georgie. And as I've said, we'll be here for you. I feel a song coming on. We'll be there. <laughs> oh, no, I can't sing. My wife says, I've lost my voice since my stroke. Or she said, I never had one in the first place. <laughs> so final words, George. Tell everybody what to do. Talk, reach out, communicate. Don't be shy because I should have. But I am shy. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> <laughs> we love you so much. God bless you. And we'll see you on the other side. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Bye. Oh, that was amazing. And next week, we're joined by Jo T, who's going to give you an update on her story. Jo, unfortunately, tested and got coronavirus, but we will, we will catch up with her and her husband, Danny. There'll be double trouble. So thank you. God bless. Stay safe and do as you're told. Face, space. I've got the other one now. Hands, face, space. Okay, take care. Thank you. Bye. Love you.